Welcome to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection. And I'm Linda Karnowskis, and we want to thank you for joining us on this Wednesday, March 30th. We have an informative show for you today. We have with us from the Center of Family Un Unity, representing the Exchange Club, we have Annette Frank, and we'll be learning all about their Blue Ribbon Month happening in April. And then later on in the show, we'll be visiting with Jane Nyquist from the Health Department here, and we have some new ordinances we're going to be reviewing with her. The Oatana Today Show welcomes your comments on show ideas or guests or just comments about the show. And you can email us at the Oatana Today at charter.net or by calling uh, Leanne Alt, our producer, at 390-5751. Now, we will take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back with Annette Frank. Please stay with us. Hi, I'm Dr. Beth Giltvet. And I'm Dr. Nick Vincelli of Horizon Eye Care. We want you to see what you love and love how you see. We're proud sponsors of the Owatonna Today Show. I needed more than just another dead-end job. I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. With the kids off to college, I decided it was time for me to go back to work and express myself. Express got me in touch with some really great companies. Now I'm on my way to a great career. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Express yourself today. Welcome back to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection. And we're here talking with Annette Frank from the Center uh, for Family Unity, yes. which is kind of a little spin-off of the Exchange Club, which we'll get into. Absolutely. Hi, Annette. Hi, Linda. Now, you're here to talk about April, which is? Blue Ribbon Month. And what do you do special with Blue Ribbon Month with the uh, Center of Family Unity? Well, for the Center of Family Unity, we are all about child abuse prevention, and that is what April is about. It's Child Abuse Prevention Month. And so the Owatonna Exchange Club has a project that they do every April where they will put out blue ribbons across the community, just reminding people to be aware of what's going on around you, and, and maybe you can help a child who might be in that situation. Well, take mm -hmm. us back. You mentioned the Exchange Club. Yes. Explain how you're connected to that and what, it, what the Exchange Club is. Absolutely. The Exchange Club is a national organization, and we are all across the United States and Puerto Rico. Uh, we have four pillars of service at the Exchange Club. It would be Americanism, youth, community service, and then our national project is child abuse prevention. And that is where the Center for Family Unity comes in. Um, we also have CAP centers, or child abuse prevention centers, across the United States. Um, they are supported by by the exchange clubs, which are service organizations, and our focus at the center is, again, child abuse prevention, and everything that we do is to, to help keep families um, on track and, and make sure that we're, we're helping to break that cycle of abuse. Now, you cover the Center for Family Unity covers four counties, correct? We do. We do. We, we're here in Steele County, so we're fortunate to have our CAP Center right here in Owatonna, um, but we also cover Dodge County, we cover Rice County, and Waseca County. Yourself included, plus administrative or parent mentorings, which we'll get to. Mm -hmm. how, how big is your staff? So I have right now, including myself, so I've got three parent mentors. I've got myself as the executive director. I also do some parent mentoring. And then I have six supervised visitors, so um, those who monitor visits that need to be supervised. Now, mm -hmm. are they located in the specific areas that you service the four counties, or do they all come from Owatonna? Right now, all of my people primarily come from Owatonna. Um, I do have supervisors in um, Waseca and then also in Faribault, but uh, for the parent mentors, they're all here in Owatonna. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a lot of your materials and things that you use come from the support of the Exchange Club, and then you Im implement them here on a local level, so to speak? From our national Exchange okay. Club, okay. exactly, and okay. our, our foundation um, that supports the CAP Center. So all of our, our literature to, to bring awareness to communities is pretty universal. And then we, of course, bring it down to the local level and create our own literature to, to help our families. And I want to get into in just a minute what your total function is. It's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. But could you relate to me the story on how the Blue Ribbon campaign mm -hmm. and 
um, got started. Yes. Everybody's like, why a blue ribbon and, and what did that represent? And, and the story goes that there was a grandmother who lost a, a, her grandson due to abuse and, and she just remembered the bruises. You know, she remembered the black and blue and um, she decided, you know what, she wanted to bring awareness because maybe if people were more aware of what was happening on around them, that they could save the life of a child. And so that's where the blue ribbon came in, you know, tying that, and really that the whole idea of tying a ribbon around is bringing us together, making us aware of our surroundings, and then the blue representing, you know, unfortunately, mm -hmm. the bruises. And mm -hmm. I heard that this grandmother tied a ribbon around her car antenna. Mm -hmm. So anywhere in town she would go, people would wonder what that is. And Ask and they ask, it? and that's what it, what it all comes, it's that conversation piece. Why do you have that blue ribbon? And then she can tell her story. The blue ribbon's around town. Why do you have those blue ribbons? This is why, and we can tell that story. So it's just mm -hmm. keeping that color blue in, in our heads mm -hmm. and what, exactly. that, what that means. Exactly. So there's no big fundraiser or function. It's just putting it out there. Exactly. And there is one special thing people can do, and what, what is that yes, on Mondays? Yes, it is Blue Mondays. And so you'll, you'll notice that the Exchange Club members will wear blue on Mondays, but we encourage the community to do that as well. And it's really, again, bringing awareness because people say, why is everybody wearing blue today? Yeah. This is why we're wearing blue because because April is about child abuse prevention. So. Now you're bringing awareness. Mm -hmm. And so if people become aware yes. of abuse, they have to, mm -hmm. they, they're they challenged by it or mm -hmm. need to know what to do about it. Right. And that's right. where you're, you're, you come in, the family of, uh, Center. So exactly. why don't you tell us what it is you offer to those out there who may give you a call? Absolutely. And and first of all, I just want to clarify that our agency isn't just about, you know, you've already abused your child and so we want to come in and try to fix that. We're really about prevention. And so we've all been there as parents where you, you have those moments where you're just so stressed out, so frustrated, you don't know what to do. You know, there's all these different dynamics, all these things coming into play, and you just don't know where to turn. We want to be that resource for them, you know, where we can come in and we can help maybe manage some of that. So the parents that we work with, we're working on parenting skills, you know, whatever different pieces that they feel that they're they're maybe lacking in. We work on positive discipline. You know, the way things were done years ago is not the way that they're done no. now. I mean, I even look at my own self and, and things that were okay, yeah. they're not okay now. <laughs> um, and so just teaching parents those new techniques that are, that are very effective. You know, it could be anger management. That's a huge thing. We know people that they, they know they get angry, but they don't know what to do about it, you know, so we can help them with that. Um, it's stress management, you know, and stress comes from a number of different places. You know, it could be financial, it could be, you know, just work, it could be whatever the case may be. If we can come in and help them identify some stress management tools, then they're also teaching their children those skills so that when they become adults, they're also, everything that we've taught the parent is being passed on to the child, and then they can then raise their family, you know, with that nurturing healthy environment versus the you know hostile or negative type environment that some people are just they kind of get thrown into based off of what's happening in their lives well mm -hmm. not only that mm -hmm. uh, we're all parents for the first time some exactly. of us younger yeah. than than others mm -hmm. but either case it doesn't matter it's exactly. the first time you're a parent exactly and yeah. a lot of times you have these mm -hmm. emotions and you wonder you wonder how you're doing right you don't have a whole lot to gauge it on exactly and so that yeah. you would be a good resource for that absolutely yeah. mm -hmm. if a parent is parenting and they're having guilt about the way they're doing it, mm -hmm. if they were to call you mm -hmm. and say, you know, I'm not sure I'm doing this right, right. And, uh, or I'm potty training right. a toddler and I'm not sure I'm, I'm mm -hmm. handling this right, yeah. because you don't want it to come out of anger. Right. You want it to all come from a good place. Exactly. exactly. What, would be, what would happen if they called you? Then what we would do is we would send a parent mentor to their home so we don't make them come to us unless they choose to. And the parent mentor will sit down with them and have a conversation. Let's find out exactly what's going on. What are kind of your trigger things? What are the issues that you feel that you're having? What are you feeling guilty about? We'll develop some goals. And then we'll come in each week and we'll work with you on different techniques, different strategies, different ways of addressing whatever it is that you brought to our attention. And we'll continue to work with you until you feel that you're okay to go on your own at that point. So I, there isn't a set, you know, yep, you get three months and you're out of here. You mm -hmm. know, it's 
however long it takes to accomplish because you may develop more goals right. as you go on. And it's really just, it is a mentorship. We are there as your partner, as your cheerleader to encourage you to be the best parent you can possibly be. So the way I envision this would be a home visitation class mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where you go over the objectives, yes. uh, what you're trying to mm -hmm. achieve, and mm -hmm. then you might bring handouts, exactly. you bring information, yes. you'll guide them, mm -hmm. mentor them with what is the correct responses, what the motivation might be, right. and right. then say, now work on these, mm -hmm. and then we'll come back Next, and see how it went. Next week, next month, exactly. whatever. It's on a weekly basis. We meet Ooh. with our families every single week because we think it's very important to be able to have that follow-up. Now you've tried this. Did it work? If it didn't, how can we tweak it so that it can work for the next time? Okay. Mm -hmm. So would that be in anything? Uh, say there's stress over financial. Mm -hmm. uh, would you help them with their finances as well? Exactly. We, we will help them develop a budget. We will get them connected with other resources within the community that can help to relieve some of those stresses that they're having. You know, maybe they find that they don't have enough money to bring in food on the table and they're feeling guilty that they're not providing their child with three meals a day. We'll connect them with the food shop. You know, maybe clothing is something that they're lacking. We'll connect them with the clothesline. You know, maybe we can, we see that their child could benefit from a mentor. We'll connect them with big brothers, big sisters, you know, so we're really there to help identify where the gaps are and um, help get them to the resources that they need. And then at the same time, we're also addressing some of those internal parenting skills and, and different techniques that they could be using. Mm -hmm. So you have an abundance of resources out there yes. that you can connect them to. Yes. And say they progress to a certain point. Of course, all of this is confidential. Yes. It's not like, do you report them to any place or whatever no. and let and now if you do know there's for real abuse going on you would we are have mandatory to. reporters yes so okay. we do have to report any abuse that we are witness to and and we do that and we let our parents know that we need to do that um, but for the most part we're there to to be their cheerleaders and to to help encourage them to to continue to grow as parents mm -hmm. but your main goal is prevention yes and it's heading it off at the pass through education yes and mm -hmm. so you welcome calls on all absolutely. those levels to, to help. Absolutely. And a lot of times, are you seeing success there? Oh, absolutely. And because we model, that's been very successful. And we go into the home so we can actually see the true environment that we're, we're working with. It's different when you have somebody come into a classroom. You don't know what's at home, you know. Mm -hmm. And so when you can come in and actually identify and maybe point some things out, you're able to better assist that family. And mm -hmm. all your mentors are trained. Yes, they are. And if you have interest in being a mentor or... Uh, would like to get involved in the program, could you give them your contact information? Absolutely. So Annette Frank at the Exchange Club Center for Family Unity, and I can be reached at 507-363-1118. That's my personal cell. Or at the office, 507-455-1190. Thanks, Annette. Thank you, Appreciate Linda. all you do. Mm -hmm. We will take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back with Jane Nyquist. Please stay with us. This March, as part of Minnesota Food Share, we hope to raise $100,000 and or pounds of food. Minnesota Food Share contributes additional money based on our local donations. In 2015, 3,200 individuals living in Steele County registered at the food shelf. By the end of 2015, the food shelf gave out 600,000 pounds of food. With your support, we are able to provide monthly a 10-day package of groceries to our neighbors in need. Thank you for your support. Hi, Eric here from Owatonna Senior Place. Participate in one of the many active fitness classes we have or hop on the bus for one of our great day trips. We have a variety of programs and activities happening throughout the week. Our goal at Senior Place is to create positive moments for you at a reasonable and affordable price. Don't forget the Senior Place Partnership Program with over 40 businesses giving discounts and incentives to you for being a Senior Place member. Contact us for more details. Live full, live well, live long. Amy Swain Hearing Centers is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Dr. Amy Swain and I want everyone to hear better. I'm Deb Gillard. And I'm Sean McNulty with Brookdale Owatonna Assisted Living and Memory Care. Where we provide optimum living activities to keep our residents engaged in life. And we are a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. 
I'm Dan Branstead of Carlson Branstead & Company, Certified Public Accountants. We support the Oatana Today Show. At Triumph Graphics, we think beyond ink. That's why you should make us your source for creative concept, design, print, mail, and web. Check us out today at triumphgraphics.com. Welcome back to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection. And we're here talking with the Steele County Health Department, Jay and Jane Nyquist. Hi, Jane. Good morning. You have a bunch of information to share with us this morning. We have a new ordinance coming our way called for Oatana, the Indoor Air Ordinance. Yes, we do. So we need all kinds of education about that. Just quickly, uh, Jane, would you just tell a little bit about what you do at the health department and what your role okay. is there? Okay, yes. I have been with Steele County Public Health for 15 years. I'm a health educator. I uh, work pretty much off of grants, so we have to apply for grants from time to time. And uh, what I want to talk about today is some tobacco prevention grants that we've received. And uh, this one in particular is from Clearway, Minnesota. We applied for this grant uh, with Dodge, Rice, um, Goodhue, let's see, Dodge, Steele, Rice, and Goodhue County, four counties. So we call ourselves the Four Corners Partnership. <laughs> and so um, this particular grant is working on policy. We want to um, try to reduce tobacco use and exposure to tobacco through policies. And so this particular policy, or it, it's an ordinance in our county, is to um, Im improve the indoor air quality. And so Minnesota has the Minnesota Clean Indoor Air Act, or the um, Freedom to Breathe Act, that went into effect in the 90s, and then it was updated in 2007, the Freedom to Breathe Act where you could not use uh, smoking products, combustible tobacco products, anywhere indoors. Um, at that time, electronic cigarettes were not on our radar screen. Um, nobody had heard of them. They didn't start coming to uh, be coming to the forefront until the, the last few years. And then now they're really uh, proliferating and we see them all over the place. And so people think they're safe. They're, they think they're just a vapor, a water vapor product. Um, they are not safe. There are, there's nicotine in them, there are other carcinogens and toxins in them. So um, the state hasn't moved to make um, them a part of the Minnesota Clean Indoor Air Act yet. There are some um, parts of some different businesses and uh, like clinics and any government facilities, anything licensed by the state of Minnesota. Uh, they cannot use electronic cigarettes like in, in daycare and foster care and government buildings. But uh, you can still use them in restaurants and bars and different facilities. So we in Steel County, we went to the county board and said, we're really concerned about this product. It it's a, could be a gateway product for other tobacco use. Since it does contain nicotine, it's addictive. Um, since some of the products have what is called e-juice, uh, it's a liquid that you can put in your own electronic device. Uh, which has flavorings in it, which up to 7,000 different flavorings, concern that youth might find this real attractive product. We decided we wanted to see if we could regulate it better in all indoor facilities. So we went to them back in, well, last year, many times. Finally, in January, they were very um, receptive to the idea that we wanted to keep the community safe. Um, we wanted to make sure there wasn't any confusion when we were trying to um, regulate the indoor air just from regular cigarette products, tobacco, cigars, stuff like that, um, because people thought they could use this indoor pro or this vapor product, and so they agreed that this was something we needed to keep um, regulate. And now you cannot use electronic cigarettes anywhere in Steele County, and that includes Otana, Ellendale, Medford, Blooming Prairie, in any indoor facility. Um, so where you can't smoke, you can't use an electronic cigarette well, in they, Steel County. They still give off. They do. Vapors and, and mm -hmm. what. And uh, can I ask you, when you talked about flavors and appeals to children, that caught my ear. Are manufacturers required to reveal? They aren't. They aren't. They're not. Uh, the FDA doesn't regulate them. Wow. So we don't know for sure. There are a lot of uh, studies being done at universities and other facilities looking at what's in them. Mm -hmm. You know, we do know that there are toxins in them. There are carcinogens in this uh, liquid that's mm -hmm. in them. Um, nicotine. Nicotine is found to be harmful to the developing adolescent brain. I did mention there's like 7,000 different flavorings that they found. You know, bubble gum, uh, cotton candy, cinnamon, uh, tutti frutti. I mean, you name it, and there's a flavor out there. Are they even required to give warnings? No. 
No. Um, and they can they sell them. They can sell them pretty much anywhere. I mean, you can manufacture the juice anywhere. So there's no you know there's no facility that regulates them. Back in oh I'm going to get the year wrong a year or two ago they did regulate the actual bottles and they do have to have child resistant caps on them in Minnesota because it is um, kids there is a child there was a child death in, out east somewhere a year or two ago where the child got into the um, bottle and drank it because it I mean I've smelled them they they smell really good. And so a little child could very much get into it and poison themselves. So we're really concerned. Um, well, we've got the ordinance. You know, you cannot just want to make sure everyone knows in the community we cannot use these products indoors anywhere. And in tobacco shops, we have another component of that ordinance called sampling. And any tobacco shop, we're, we have one tobacco shop that's on Bridge Street, and there was going to be another one going in out by the fairgrounds. Um, there should be no sampling, testing, um, a sampling of cigars or electronic delivery devices or e-cigs. So there, you shouldn't be able to try one out to see if you like it. That's part of that ordinance. And another thing we're going to be looking at is regulating the flavoring piece because flavors are appealing to youth. I mean, uh, the tobacco industry probably isn't making tutti frutti so that you and I could go out and try a tobacco product. It's probably for youth to appeal to them. I mentioned the nicotine uh, does affect the de developing adolescent brain. Um, what does the World Health Organization recommend on all this? The World Health Organization says that we should regulate this all because they said no uh, vaping, no electronic cigarette use should be used indoors at all. So I know in Minnesota there are advocates that are looking to regulate flavorings, regulate vaping, all of this indoors. And I know some of my colleagues are going to be going to the legislature this year and looking to regulate this. And um, there are, they're looking for sponsors for some of the bill, proposed bills to regulate this. They're looking for sponsors to regulate menthol. Menthol is another flavoring that has come under fire um, from the tobacco industry. Um, menthol was put in the products to make it easier to start smoking because it soothes the throat, makes it easier for the smoke to go down. It also we're finding is making it harder for folks to quit smoking that want to quit. Something with the menthol makes it harder to quit the smoking. Mm -hmm. And don't ask me about it because it's some chemical reaction and I couldn't tell you about it. Um, but I could get back to you if you wanted to know that. <laughs> um, so menthol is a flavoring that we would like to regulate too and, and more to come on that. Another thing we would like to regulate that we see um, California is looking to raise the tobacco age to 21 to purchase. Hawaii already did that. Um, Chicago and New York City have also raised the age to purchase to 21. So that's something that's coming down the pike too. Um, they're very expensive. They are. They're like 750 a pack now yeah. in, in Minnesota. Yeah, I don't know how young people could afford that. <laughs> and that's partly why that or was, old people uh, well, or old people. Yeah, that's partly why the tobacco tax was raised a few years ago because youth are price sensitive, and if we could keep the price up high, we can limit the places where people are allowed to smoke. It has reduced the youth smoking rate, also the adult smoking rate, but it has reduced the youth smoking rate, which is what we want. We don't want kids to um, start this habit because it is a deadly habit. What are the, now that the ordinance is passed and mm -hmm. we have to apply it here, yes. what is the responsibility of our proprietors here in town? Well, our proprietors will need to um, post signage. Okay. They need to let people know what the, um, what the ordinance is. They need to, if someone is using this product in their facility, they need to ask them to quit smoke or to quit using the product, the e-cig, e electronic delivery device is kind of the technical name for it. Mm -hmm. um, Make sure you don't provide the equipment. If you're like like I mentioned, a, a retailer, a tobacco retailer, who's selling these electronic cigarettes, make sure you don't have them available for people to try. You can have them available, of course, to sell, but you shouldn't be providing samples for people to try and then sample uh, juice. What, what an e-cigarette is, it's an electronic device. Some are closed so that you use them, and once they're used up, you can throw them. But some of them are such that you can unscrew them and fill mm -hmm. them and stuff like that. And that's where the sampling would come in. Uh, well, also the closed systems. But So um, make sure that you don't, and if someone is using in a restaurant or a bar, you need to tell them to quit or you can't serve them. So make sure you, you, know, you do that. 
Right. But we just want people to be aware that these things are out there and that um, if anyone has any questions or wants any more information or any, you know, I'd be happy to come out and talk to you about any of these things, um, definitely give us a call at Public Health. Uh, you know, ask for Jane. They know who the tobacco gal is there. Be mm -hmm. happy to come out and speak with you about it. We've got a lot of information, and there's uh, information online about it. Definitely. Right? Oh, definitely. But we, if you go online, make sure you go to a reliable source and... Um, Call me first. I'll give you some good sources. Okay. Well, thank you, Jane. It's You're very welcome. informative. We appreciate your time. Thank you. We want to uh, thank Jane for joining us today, and we'll, we will take a short message, or we'll take a short break to hear a message from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back. So please stay with us. Hello, my name is Katie Marshall. A year ago, my family and I became homeless. We were scared and alone. Today, with the help of Steel County Transitional Housing and generous donors like you, my family and I are safely housed. I am working, going to college, paying my rent on time. My children have a warm bed to sleep in every night. My family and I are so grateful for this second chance. Please help others in need by donating to Transitional Housing today. Everyone deserves a safe place to live. Hi, my name is Dave Efforts with TPS Insurance. We're here to handle all your insurance needs. We are a very proud supporter of the Otana Today Show. Hi, I'm Rich from Sign Pro and Auto Trim Design, a proud sponsor of the Otana Today Show. Come and see us for all your sign and truck accessory needs. Welcome back to the Otana Today Show, your community connection. We want to thank Jane Nyquist from the Steele County Health Department. Very informative information. And now it's time for community announcements. Registration is now open for the Riverbend Nature Center summer camps. Riverbend offers 24 different summer camp sessions for children and youth ages 3 to 14 in the months of June, July, and August. Camp information and registration is available on the Nature Center's website at www.rbnc.org slash summer camp or by calling them at 507-332-7151. Minnesota Disasters opens at the Steele County History Center on March 31st. The exhibit explores the, the preparation, reaction, and aftermath to catastrophe in our state. On the 31st, the History Center will host a panel discussion where six Steele County residents will recount their experiences having survived the 60, 1967 tornado, the 2010 flood, and the 2010 tornado. This uh, event is open to the public and is free, for, free of charge for members, $2 admission for non-members, and this exhibit is on temporary loan from the Minnesota History Center in St. Paul. Express Employment Professionals announces its seventh annual Refresh Leadership simulcast on Wednesday, April 13th at the Oatana Holiday Inn. Speakers are Marshall Goldsmith, Shaquille O'Neal, and Kaplan Mowbray. Register at refreshleadership.com slash live or call Express Employment Professionals at 455-3002 for more information. Well, we want to thank you for joining us, and we hope you'll come and join us on Friday when we'll be visiting with the RC modelers about drones in the news. And then later on in the show on Monday, we'll, see Steel, we'll talk with the ladies from Steel County Humane Society, and we'll get an update there. So you have a great rest of the day, and we will see you on Friday.